The Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act of 2023 was reintroduced on the 27th of July 2023 following a lack of support in 2022 by Senators Elizabeth Warren and Roger Marshall. And this has worryingly been met with some support, which we'll see a bit later in this video. However, it's also received a large amount of criticism, particularly from those who support the crypto industry and see the huge potential of this technology. And this legislation is seen as being one of the largest threats to crypto to exist today, should it pass, of course. So please do like this video and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to offer more content for you in future. And let's jump straight in and take a look at these regulations in more detail. The aims of the Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act of 2023, as you can see here, are to try to tackle money laundering, ransomware attacks, theft, fraud, trafficking, terrorist financing, cyber crimes, and other crimes not mentioned, all of which are apparently happening through the use of crypto and digital assets. And some figures are included in this act, such as the amount of $1.7 billion that North Korea has apparently stolen in crypto, and with drugs worth an estimated $50 billion coming from crypto funds, with Elizabeth Warren, who we will be looking at next, being particularly vocal about the negative side effects of the crypto industry, and adding many other negative comments about it over a period of time because support for the bill has been growing in the Senate, as you can see here, because it has 19 co-sponsors at the time of recording this video who have backed the Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act, three of whom are members of the Banking Committee, and the latest few being added as recently as December 2023. And this set of regulations already had the backing of organisations, including the Bank Policy Institute, Massachusetts Bankers Association, Transparency International US, Global Financial Integrity, National District Attorneys Association, Major County Sheriffs of America, the National Consumer Law Center, and the National Consumers League. So the question is, will it actually get through the Senate and the House of Representatives? Well, as you can see here, Elizabeth Warren's success rate on getting bills passed isn't great, with a success rate of 11 out of 330 proposed, which, as well as the fact that most legislation that's put forward never becomes law, does bode well in my opinion, and means we shouldn't just panic about this. And if it did pass, I would hope that there would be significant scrutiny of it through the courts. But let's now look at what changes the Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act of 2023 puts forward and why it would be such an attack on crypto and users of it in the United States. So firstly, it would extend the KYC requirements by extending the Bank Secrecy Act, or BSA, to include crypto wallet providers, miners, validators, and other network participants who may perform these functions. As well as these parties, unhosted wallets would also be required to register as financial institutions, keep customer data and records, and file reports on certain transactions without the user's permission. So put in other words, they want to be able to see everything and control it, which we'll see more of next. And just so we're clear about what they call an unhosted wallet, you can see here that it's basically any software or hardware wallet that stores public and private keys that's used to digitally sign and transact crypto that you have full ownership of. So this definition would include cold storage wallets. By developing AML or anti-money laundering programs, users could be blocked from using their software or network if they're suspected of moving funds that are related to crime. Every financial institution, including the ones I've just mentioned above, that they seem to be classifying as one, such as software and hardware wallets, would also be banned 
from transacting with privacy coins. Anyone from the United States who transacts using crypto with a value that's larger than $10,000 through one or more offshore, overseas or foreign accounts must file this with the IRS. Any crypto ATMs that existed would also need to collect and verify customer identity and data with the physical addresses of these digital asset kiosks being provided by their operators. There are a few exemptions included in the legislation, but it would depend on how FinCEN, which is the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, as you can see here, how they applied this regulation as to what is covered and what isn't. For example, with miners, or the largest cryptocurrencies in Bitcoin and Ethereum. So please be under no illusions. Elizabeth Warren and Roger Marshall, through this act, are actively attacking crypto, see it as a threat, and want to control it completely. On Elizabeth Warren's website, she calls herself an outspoken advocate for regulation and oversight of crypto. And she even lists the times that she's spoken out against crypto that you can see here. And this list goes all the way back to June of 2021, by the way, when she called crypto the Wild West. So the question I'd have at this point is, where's the freedom, the privacy, and the rights that individuals should surely have? In my opinion, what I can see here is large control, centralization, surveillance, all justified because of a few bad actors. And there are other critics of this proposed crypto act, such as the Chamber of Digital Commerce, who released a statement on their website opposing this legislation. They have also released several other messages criticizing it, with two of them that you can see here that I'm sharing with you. They say that they think it's unlikely to pass the Senate, but they encourage interested American crypto users to contact their senator to express opposition to this bill. So that ends this video looking at the Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act of 2023. But as always, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. Where do you stand on this? If you are in favor of crypto regulation in order to bring it more in line with the traditional financial system, which would have both positives and negatives, then the question I suppose to ask here is, is this the right bill or the right act to do that? Or does it go too far? Do you agree with people like Elizabeth Warren or the JP Morgan Chase CEO, Jamie Dimon, in thinking that digital assets and crypto are too big of a risk due to money laundering and crime? Or do you, like me, see the huge potential in this nascent digital asset technology, and if it's handled correctly, could lead to large transformative improvements in the future. And if you're interested in more of a tailored approach to your crypto education, and you think you'd benefit from having someone look over your shoulder and guide you on your journey, I do offer one-to-one -one coaching to those who have the desire and the means to educate themselves further. And there are links in the description where you can message me and book in a free video call to see if we'd be a good fit. And if you found this content interesting, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really does help. And have a great day.